Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our chess set build. Well, we ended on a bit of a cliffhanger last week, wondering how those pawns turned out that we cut. So without further ado, let's not talk. Let's get over there and have a look at those pawns. So I'll just undo this jig and take out this center pawn here. And this is what you end up with. You end up with this little piece and parts are falling off and that's okay because when those parts fall off and they became or they become unattached to the piece, just wiggle this out of here. Uh, this one might still be held in just ever so slightly at the bottom. Yes, it looks like I need to trim the bottom of this one just to get the piece out. So that's okay, I can do that. Let me trim it and I'll get right back to you. So I've trimmed it and got it to release. And what you end up with is this. Check that out. That is absolutely awesome. So this is the easiest piece of the bunch. And as you could see, they're time consuming. So take your time, go around and cut all of your pawns. I'm going to do the same. And when I get the pawns cut, I will uh, go through some of the other pieces and things that you may want to look out for while you're cutting them. Well, I just want to show you something here. Um, Sometimes on these compound cuts, especially with thicker stock, when you start peeling it apart, it may not separate. Now that can happen when, for these pieces here, I cut them around this way and then stop in the corner. And then I backtrack and cut this and join it in the corner. And if you're putting too much forward pressure on your piece, when you get to that corner, it, you can be flexing the blade from front to back. So when you come into these corners, just kind of ease up a little bit on your pressure and let the blade catch up when you get to the corner. But it hasn't cut through all the way. Now this piece is not ruined, not to worry. Um, a fret saw in this instance is your friend. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna take a fret saw. I have the same kerf blade in it that I have in the scroll saw because conveniently they take the same blades and we'll just install this blade and gently and I mean gently don't go all aggressive here don't think that you're cutting a two by four you just want to gently work your blade down to the area well that one just popped right out but you want to get it right down to the area and just sort of nibble at it and it will eventually pop out just blow the dust out of it and you'll be able to see where the area is that's holding. Now I have a section here that actually cut, but then it didn't separate. So we can get in here with this fret saw and just nibble away at it and it should separate. There we go, just like that. And we'll take it right to the end and then we can just cut it off just gently. As I said, don't go crazy with like 400 strokes a minute here. You're not trying to cut the whole top of it off. You're trying to just correct something that happened in error. And there we go. We've cut that piece there that was stuck out of there. So there you go. Just there's more ways than one. And don't think that just because your piece didn't pop out cleanly, uh, that your your chest piece is ruined. It's not. It just means you have to get in there with a fret saw or something and cut it free. Okay, and that is all 16 pawns cut. I just want to reiterate here um, that this is not a fast project. You are not going to bang one of these off in, a, in an afternoon. I have 16 pawns cut here, and truth be told, that's seven and a half hours of cutting right there. That doesn't include anything to do with setting up the stock or getting the patterns onto the blocks. It's all cutting, seven and a half hours worth. 
Now, some other things I want to point out here is blades. Guys, on a scroll saw, blades are a consumable. It's no different than, say, welding rods for an arc welder. You're not going to reuse them over and over and over and over again. Once they're done, they're done. So if you're finding the cuts are not going as well, you're noticing a little more burning, uh, the cuts are a lot slower, that sort of thing, um, just change the blade, guys. I went through seven blades cutting these 16 pieces. Now, with that being said, those blades are not done. They are done to cut something like an inch and a half thick material, but they will be absolutely fine for other projects that are thinner material. You send things like cutting three quarter inch stock and that sort of thing. So I will put those aside, mark them as used blades, and I will eventually get their full, the full use out of them. But as far as cutting inch and a half thick stock, it isn't happening. The other thing you want to take note is that there is going to be some burning. It is inevitable. Sometimes you cut a little too fast and what happens is you're not giving the gullets of the blade enough time to clear the wood, the sawdust that's inside that kerf. And that kerf is tiny, that blade is hot, and the material is dense. So as you're cutting there and you're not giving it time to clear that dust, that dust is frictioning or it's friction burning on the side of the blade and it's causing your piece to burn. Don't worry about it. Once all the pieces are cut, we have to sand them anyway. Sand them, file them, clean them up, that sort of thing. It's inevitable. It's the way it is. One last thing I want to take note of here, actually two last things. Make sure your blade is square. If it, the blade is not square to the table, the whole project is going to be messed up and your uh, cleanup work with the file is going to be a lot more and you're going to have a lot more frustration. You're going to end up having to use that fret saw a lot more to separate pieces after you're done cutting. Um, so please make sure your blade is square and let the blade do its job. Don't force it. Second of all, guys, don't underestimate the scroll saw. I don't know if the marks are still here, but I wear a dust mask the entire time while cutting these pieces. The amount of sawdust that is created from the scroll saw by cutting this thickness of stock is absolutely unbelievable. Don't believe me? Cut one piece of walnut. Cut one piece and see how much you taste it in your mouth. Get the dust mask on, guys. It's not going to kill you to wear it. Put it on while scrolling. Keep that fine dust out of your lungs. So let's move on to a different uh, genre of pieces here. And what I'm going to work on next is the bishops. But I want to give you a little tip here on doing pieces like the bishops. So let's head over to the bench. So for my set, I am cutting a classic bishop. I think that's what they call it. But one side does not have a little slot at the top. One side does. This is one heck of a curve. To be able to try to get your blade to come down this one little plane here and get in there and curve it in, it's a nightmare. So drill a blade entry hole I would say right about here. And then you can start your blade in here. You can come in this way and cut out this slot. And then when you're actually doing this piece, you can come around and just bypass this slot altogether. It'll be a much cleaner cut. As well, these little scallops here, those are some tight cornering with a number seven bit in an inch and a half stock. So I would also suggest to cut or to place a blade entry hole outside here in your waste area. Remember on a, on a compound cut, you want to keep the outside waste area intact, as intact as you possibly can because it ends up to be the support for the second cut when you rotate it. So we're going to do blade entry holes here and here, possibly even down here so that we can curl in and cut directly in between these scallops. You'll cut directly in here, back your blade out, and then reverse your blade in, and you should be able to come through just nicely and get these scallops nice and clean. 
It's very important that you give yourself the room to do that. So other than that, there's really not much to report here on this one. If you want a sharper corner up top, I might even suggest placing a blade entry hole right up here. And it's more of an exit hole so that you can bring this around into the waist area. After you pass this point, waist area, turn your blank around and come down this way. You'll leave your blank intact and only lose a little circle up here. So I'm gonna cut these blade entry holes and I'm gonna cut a bishop and I'm gonna come back and show you what we end up with for this piece. All right, the bishop is cut and we'll just crack this open to see what it is that we've come up with. Um, this is one of those pieces that really, really knocks it home the importance for having your blade square to your table. And I'll show you why in just a second. Some of them can be a little finicky to get out. There we go. And ah, this piece here isn't separated. All right, so let me separate this piece here and then I'll show you what I'm referring to as far as having the blade square. Now with all of those tight corners here where we drilled blade entry holes, if your blade is not square, they are gonna be cutting crooked. And when that happens, on compound cutting, they're not going to line up. So one's gonna be this way and then it's gonna be this way. You can see how this is gonna cause problems. If your blade is square and you continually check it to make sure that it's square, you'll end up so that all of those pieces all line up around the edge. And you end up with a gorgeous piece. Just look at that, that is beautiful. Now, I'm not gonna say it's perfect. It needs some filing here. There's a little bit of a ridge. It needs some sanding, but all in all, uh, it's a beautiful piece and everything is lined up really nicely. So just remember, blade entry holes can help you. And again, I can't stress enough to keep that blade square to your table. So with that now, let's cut the other three bishops and then we'll move on to one of the other pieces. And after some time, you'll end up with your four bishops cut. Well, I'm going to move on to the rook. And the rook is the first time here in the set that we're going to encounter interior cuts. And that will be these windows and this door. And you can see that it is on both sides. So when you encounter something like this, where you have interior cuts, you want to cut those pieces first as well. What I would like to do is just like we did with the bishop to get a nice clean line on the slot that's up in the head of the bishop, what I want to do is I'm going to drill blade entry holes in the middle of our rook here and at the top of each one of our towers. That will give us a blade entry point to be able to get down there and hopefully cut some nice crisp peaks here along our towers. So I'm gonna get this one cut and then I'll show you what it looks like. Well, you have the one set of interior cuts done and I just want to point something out to you or bring it to your attention before I carry on with the cutting. When you flip it now, because you wanna do these interior cuts as well before you cut the perimeter, something you wanna keep in mind and that is that your blade is going to be going along you know, at its regular speed, and it has the potential to suddenly speed up and go forward. And if you're on a curve here, that could really cause you to lose control. So be very careful of how much pressure you're putting into your blade. The reason it goes slower or faster is depending on where the cuts are situated, you're now cutting this way. So in essence, you're cutting less material. So the blade is gonna cut more quickly. So just be careful of your blade control, not to have too much pressure into the blade because you could really ruin the inside cuts there. So there you go. That's just one thing you want to keep in mind. And now that I have said that, I'll carry on with these cuts. Well, I have two of the rooks cut and I just want to show you how beautiful these pieces are. Um, this is unreal. I absolutely love these little castles and I think they look great. And some people are gonna think that this is not obtainable if you have beginner level scrolling skills. And 
I say that's not true. The key is to take your time. And I'm not going to lie to you. These are tough cuts. They are very slow. They're very tedious. Uh, these pieces are crazy how long they take. But I'm also here to tell you that it's very obtainable for any level of scroller um, as long as you just take your time. That is the key here. Take your time and the blade being square. And there we go. There are the four rooks cut. Uh, I'm going to tell you, so far, the toughest piece to cut. Just fun pieces to cut, but very time consuming and a tough cut for sure. So now we're going to turn our attention to the next two pieces, and I think I want to cut the king and queen. Now, there isn't much to say here about these two pieces, but what I will say is just like the rook, we want to cut these interior cuts first and get them out of the way. Once those are out of the way, then it's really nothing special. We will just spin around through here all the way around and cut the perimeter just like the pawns with a little bit of uh, interior work at the beginning. Nothing really special. So I'm going to cut the king and queen and show you how they look when I get them done. And that would be the king and queen of both colors done. Well, there's only one more set of pieces to do. That's four pieces, and that will be the knights. Now, the knight is a little different than the rest of the pieces. And it's going to start off just like the rest did by cutting the one profile, rotating 90 degrees, and cutting the second profile. I'm going to do that, and then when I get that done, I'm going to come back and see it and show you what the third step is in cutting these pieces. All right, so I've got all four knights cut uh, on both of their sides that you need to cut them. And let me just break them out of their casing here and see what we've got. There we go. And you can see that, well, they're kind of horse-like, but this is really chunky. And this is where we want to concentrate on next. Now I'll show you here on a maple one so that the lines show up. What you want to do is you want to draw a line from this point here where the jaw meets the neck straight up just like that right up to the top and you'll do that on both sides okay so now what you want to do is you want to head over to your scroll saw and you want to set your blade at this point to 30 degrees to the left so if it's a table tilt, you want to tilt your table to the left 30 degrees. If yours is like mine and your table stays stationary and your blade tilts, tilt it the opposite way. You basically want your blade to be going to the right. Once you get that done, you can just place your piece on the table and starting from the top of the head, you can cut along that line using that line as the guide and trim off the nose piece. And once you get that done, you'll turn your piece over and you'll start at the bottom of the nose and cut through to the top of the head. And what you'll end up with is more of a horse shape. You'll take away that chunkiness. So let's get all four of these done. And at that point, your cutting of these pieces is finished. Okay, so a total of 16 hours sitting at the scroll saw, a total of 23 blades used up. And what do you end up with? Well, what you end up with is this. And as long as you followed the rules and took your time and made sure everything was square, you should have something that looks just like this as well. Um, you know what, I just want to point out, it doesn't matter how much experience you have, this is not a fast project. 16 hours. 16 hours. Do not confuse or do not equate speed with skill. Um, that is not what it's about when it comes to something like this. These are tough cuts through inch and a half thick material. And if you think you're going to do it fast, you are going to be very disappointed with your results. 
However, we've got some pieces like this one here that has burning around some of the tight corners. It's inevitable. It happens. It happens to the best of us. It is inevitable. It's going to happen. And there is only one way to fix it. And there is only one way to deal with it. And at this point in time, it's going to be a lot of filing, a lot of sanding, um, fine files, just take it easy. Even if you have like one of those emery boards that you use to do your nails sort of thing, they work really well in this situation. But there is no substitute. There's no magic formula. There's no way for me to tell you how to take away the burning. You need to go through and clean up some of the, um, the burrs that have been created on some of the pieces anyway. And each one of these pieces need to be sanded. And there you have it. A scroll saw chest set. Guys, what an amazing project. What an absolutely wonderful way to spend 16 hours. <laughs> Honestly, um, this is one of those things that when you see the final product, you're wowed by it. You can't believe that you created it on the scroll saw. And the people that look at it are not going to believe it either. It is just so beautiful. Once you add the finish now, whether it be um, oil or whether you add a shinier finish or what have you, it really brings out the contrast in the pieces and just makes this even that much more, um, I don't even know the word, it's just amazing. It just makes it that much more awe-inspiring sort of thing. I will be coating these with a spray varnish. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to go with a matte or a satin finish or a gloss. I'm kind of sitting on the fence on that one. I'm going to wait and see. I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to put this aside and then I'll decide later on because there's no rush. If this is uh, one of those things for you that you play chess, then you know what? Make one for yourself. But if you have that special someone that loves to play the game, even if you don't play my gosh, what a wonderful gift this would make. And guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I didn't expect this to be a multiple part build. It's just the way it worked out. And it worked out that way uh, mainly because of the real time scrolling of one of the pawns. And as I said, I didn't want to do that. Um, I didn't want to speed up the photography of it and give you the impression that this was quick because there's far too many woodworking channels on YouTube that don't give you the real story that make it look like you can bang one of these off in a couple hours on a weekend and that is not the case. This so far has been going over two weekends um, so it's it's not one of those things that you're going to do quickly. So anyway it is what it is. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're going to give this a try for yourself, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the show, honestly, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.